Hi! Welcome back to another short computer tutorial and this time our topic is about Shark. It's actually Wireshark. Okay, so it's a tool that is used in networking to be able to examine and analyze packets that goes through the network. Okay, to start with, let's go to the next slide. So, there you go. That's Wireshark. And we're going to discuss on the theory, basic theory, its practice, and maybe we'll do the extra next time. So what is what is Wireshark? Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer that captures packet and tries to display as details as detailed as possible. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be detailed. Anyway. So this is an example, if uh, you have Wireshark in the network and then somebody or you yourself are trying, is, trying, uh, is trying to browse uh, the internet or anything you do in the network actually is, uh, anal is record recorded in all the activities uh, made in the network when uh, Wireshark is turned on are actually captured by Wireshark. So whatever it is, maybe browser, maybe messenger. We have here even the famous Yahoo Messenger, but it's not uh, used anymore. Right now we're using the FB Messenger, uh, YouTube, and anything else, and 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 uh, and more actually. So anything is uh, being traced. All the activities is traced by Wireshark. So what's the intended purpose of using Wireshark? The first one is to troubleshoot network problems. If a network engineer detects that something's not um, not right in the network performance, like for example, there's slowdown in network, okay, he could actually use Wireshark to be able to analyze uh, uh, traffic in the packets. Next is examine security problems. Another one is debug protocol implementations. Okay, And finally is learn about network protocol which is the main purpose of this um, of this uh, discussion is to discuss about network protocol. Okay, so what are the features of Wireshark? Number one is capture live packet data from a network interface. So if your device that has Wireshark installed on it is connected to a network, it can, it is, it is capable of um, of uh, collecting uh, data packets. Uh, but also it depends on the situation because there are instances uh, when. Um, uh, like for example, a network adapter is uh, the network it depends on the situation we're in. If you you're trying, what you're trying to do is trying to sniff or collect packets from other uh, computers or devices using the network. You will need to have uh, another um, network interface card that is uh, capable of listening to those. But in the the, in the instance that we have right now where we only have our own network interface card, the only um, thing that we can listen to is our own traffic. Okay, so um, anyway, the, the purpose of, of this discussion is to be able to examine and um, understand how Wireshark works. Okay, so... Uh, um, for advanced, advanced discussion, okay, maybe later we're going to discuss on how to be able to sniff and um, collect packets from other computers or other devices within the network. Okay, so here are basic features. Again, number one is capture live packet data from a network interface. Number two is display packet with the very detailed protocol information. You'll see later that 
uh, the packet information is really detailed. Okay, uh, you you'll be able to see its um, its uh, minute details. Not just talking about the 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 packet uh, itself, but details about the packet. Save captured data. So the analyzed data is actually saved, so it can be further studied if needed be. Next is the advanced features of Wireshark is, is able to import and export packet data from and to a lot of other capture programs. It can also be used with other um, tools, networking tools. Filter and search packets on many criteria. So um, others are already advanced. So first one is capture filter. So uh, the basic example is capture only a traffic to or from IP addresses 192.168.5.4 uh, whose host is 192.168.5.4 okay. Capture traffic to or from a range of IP addresses um, 192.168.5.0 slash 24 Okay, these are examples that we can uh, um, uh, these are activities that can be done example activities that can be done to to check the, the the things that we can do with packet tracer okay we can capture only dns from uh, dns of port 53 okay so that means you can filter uh the packet that passes through port 53 only okay so we'll have more examples and detailed examples as we go on Okay, capture filter syntax. More, for example, more, another example is capturing telnet traffic from one, from and to a particular host. Example, the TCP port 23 and host 192.168.5.0. So these are uh, specific examples that we can do with um, with Wireshark. So we can specify there in the filter. We can specify. We can we can search using the protocol. We can type the protocol like for example HTTP. So we just type on the filter the HTTP, or we can also use the port. Okay, so the TCP port 23, and the display filters. So show only SMTP uh, port 25 and ICMP traffic. So these are um, specific examples. Okay, to be able to display the filters. So IP source 192.168.5.0 slash 16 and IP destination 192.168.5.0. Okay, so let's have an example. And this is using ping. As we all know, ping is a command that we use to be able to um, check handshake between uh, point to point connection. Okay, so from one point to another if there's a connection. So if you issue this command ping 192.168.15.254, expectedly if you have a connection, you will be able to have a reply. Okay, a reply from of course the 192.168.15.254. But if there is no connection, of course this will not be reply, but this will be timed out. And the time to live is 255, and uh, milliseconds, one milliseconds. This means uh, the 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 traffic is is not that congested okay okay an example is if you search on the uh, filter and you type icmp and everything that is about icmp will be displayed this is what is going to show another is okay using the command ns lookup Okay, say for example, we use the nslookup command. So, uh, what's the command here? Here, uh, nslookup tin ht.vn. So, this is a website or a location in the internet, and it will show this the server, the address, okay, name address. And from this, after typing this, when you check your a Wireshark, this is what's going to come out. The DN, uh, that uh, that type of command is uh, requesting 
query in the using DNS protocol. Okay, so when you type, well, after issuing the command, you'll be able to see sequence of DNS um, lines because uh, uh, using NS lookup is going to use the uh, DNS. And then HTTP password, which will be, we're going to have a demonstration on how to uh, HTTP to use HTTP. Uh, say for example, we're going to try to um, uh, get the password, the username and password in the HTTP. Okay, HTTP uh, website. For as long as it's HTTP website we would be able to get the password and um, username that's how unsafe HTTP is compared to HTTPS where, where you already have the S which stands for secured or security so uh, it's harder to do that you won't be able to get the password and the uh, username so with HTTP you'll be able to do that we'll, we'll have, we're going to have an example later so say for example here the filter we type http contains password and this is what shows so um here you see this line username is one bc password is i love it okay so this is display we'll have a demonstration later on then yahoo chat okay if it's messenger so it's uh, YMSG is Yahoo, Yahoo Messenger, okay? And, okay, so uh, that will be all for Wireshark, for discussion of Wireshark. The extra, the extra work we're going to discuss next time uh, where it talks about man in the middle, attack and gain and able. Okay, so that ends uh, this part. We're going to have, the next part is we're going to uh, have a demonstration on how to be able to um, uh, sniff out uh, the username and password if it's HTTP using Wireshark. Okay, so now we're going to do two tasks in Wireshark. Okay, and that is the first one we're, what we're going to do is we're going to use the ping command. Uh, remember uh, in the command prompt and we'd like to check connectivity from uh, our terminal to another maybe a website or another IP we can do that by using the, the command ping and then the other one is that is ping not pyong ping and the other one is we're going to uh, log in to an HTTP website Take note, it's not an HTTPS but an HTTP website and try to log in with a username and a password and we'll try to uh, use Wireshark to be able to uh, pick up the data which is the username and the password. Okay, So let's start with opening Wireshark. Now this is your Wireshark. Uh, the first time that you open it, you'd be able to see um, uh, these are the following are interfaces that are detected by Wireshark that is in your terminal or in your computer. So for example, for us, we have here local area connection 8, 7, 6, and you have Ethernet and then adapter for lookup traffic capture. So for us to, we have to check the ones that has the most activity. And as far as, as, as we can see here on on the screen, the one that has the most activity is this one, the Ethernet. Okay, so what we do is double click on that and there. So these are the packets that are being um, collected by pack by the Wireshark. Okay, so as you can see, you have here the time, the source. So you have sometimes it shows you the destination, sometimes the Mac. You have the source, the destination. So uh, you have the IP address, sometimes, it, sometimes it's the MAC address. And then the protocols, as you can see here, you can see UDP, MDNS. Okay, so um, you can uh, filter by typing here. So uh, example, if you just like to check on a particular pro protocol, you can just type in here and all 
that is given to you are the protocol that you're typing and then the length of the packet and the information of the packet so now let's start first with the ping so let's pull up the command prompt okay so uh packet tracer is already uh capturing i'm sorry warstrike is already capturing network activity notice that even if we haven't done anything yet uh that we see activity at the back that means there's background activity that is uh, taking place in the network so you don't notice it but actually your computer is com communicating with other um, with other devices from outside your network or maybe in the network okay so um, uh, that's how busy the network even if you don't see it so this is uh, how um, one of the the uses of Wireshark for us to be able to monitor if uh, we are if you're just that knowledgeable on uh, protocols and all this information that you can see in front of you it's really going to be very helpful to understand how a network traffic is going on in your network so let's go back to ping let's try to ping uh, say for example our uh, school which is Wimsu Western Mindanao State University so uh, let's ping you can type if you can memorize the IP address that's okay but uh, that's the that's why we have the um, DNS server because we don't have to memorize the IP address we just have to memorize the name itself or the word itself so Wimsu ping Wimsu that edu that ph remember in um, in uh, this is in a form of actually in a form of IP address if uh, uh, it goes already to to be translated by the computer so from our point of view it's wemsu.edu.ph but actually it's an IP address as seen by the computer so let's try that and let's after uh, doing this we're going to pause the capturing of the um, wire sharp so and let's press enter so as you can see pinging vimsu.edu.ph and you have reply and then let's pause this already because it keeps on uh, capturing pause okay let's tap that and then let's check this again so as you can see there's reply from 58 so this is the IP address of Wemsu or Western Mindanao State University website this is the IP address and uh, there's 32 bytes time 30 milliseconds TTL or time to live 16 okay so there were four packets sent and four packets received and there were no loss that's zero so let's try how, how do we check that in uh, in Wireshark so if it's if you're using ping the protocol that it uses is ICMP or internet control um, internet control it's ICMP is internet control message protocol okay it's the messaging protocol so it's a, it's like a two-way handshake uh, ping's function is a two-way handshake that means uh, if I send um, a message to the other a signal to the other terminal I have to wait for an acknowledgement from the terminal for, for us to be assured that there's connection so that's uh, how ICMP works so it's like um, acknowledging that there really is a connection between the terminals so let's check it here without further ado so again that's ICMP so all we have to do is just look for IC uh, or you can do it here also so basically, uh, UDP, UIP, there. There's ICMP. Here, here are the four ICMP and there's another ICMP. Let's um, type it here. There's another way and that is typing the ICMP. CMP. There. So there's reply request, reply request, reply request, reply request. And as you can see, there's uh, from our source, this is my IP address as of the moment. That's 
192.168.1.73 and the destination which is the uh, Wemsu uh, IP address Wemsu website IP address 558.71.15.3 and then that's from source that's me to Wemsu and then Wemsu replied uh, from source to me and then another one checked it again from me to the Wemsu and Wemsu to me and then uh, it did it for four times okay so one two three and four so uh, that's uh, what happened when we uh, issued the command ping wemsu.edu.ph okay so the next one is what we're going to try is we're going to use um Wireshark to be able to collect data, uh, particularly the username and the password in a in a um, in a an HTTP okay HTTP website. So I have an example here. So here's the HTTP website. Notice how, how would you know that it's an HTTP because it would show here that it's not secure or sometimes there's a warning or this kind of um, icon okay so it's if you click on it uh, um, compared to uh, the the ones that has HTTPS so let's try the wemsu.edu.ph it's loading okay there so you see a lock that means that's https and that's secured so the ones that we can uh, check with wireshark are the ones without the s so that's http okay so let's try to log in here this is actually a test website only this is not really a uh, functional as how it would uh it's just for testing testing purposes so Let's try. Um, I've already signed up this account earlier, and then let's just test it. So for test only, the username is for test only, and then the password I created is test password. So let's try test password, and then let's click on login. Just wait for a moment. Let's see what happens so um it has already uh, but based on this sign up disabled please use username test and password test also but uh, we'll try to check if it was actually picked up by wireshark so let's go to wireshark oh i'm sorry wasn't able to capture it <laughs> let's do it again let's try to do it again start capturing continue without saving and then let's do it okay. and the test password then login so uh, let's check it in um, for sure so I'm, I'm gonna stop the capturing okay so again uh, we're using the HTTP Okay, so all we have to do is just search on the filter filter portion here and just type HTTP and then press enter. Okay, so from here, it, we were able to filter the HTTP protocol. Usually, the ones with the, the account information is the post. Okay, so... We can right click on this the http this part here and then follow and then click on http because we, we used http stream so let's click on that and let's see okay so here it is the username is for test only and the password is test password so there you go that's how unsecure HTTP is so if you are asked to log in on a website that is not 
uh, that does not contain the S which only contains the HTTP never ever input your information on that website okay so that's it that's the example that we have for using Wireshark and uh, the recap what we did was the first one we used Wireshark to capture packets from performing a ping command and we pinged wimsu.edu.ph and then the second one is we used Wireshark also to capture packets uh, particularly the username and password information from an HTTP website okay so uh, I guess that's all for today's discussion thank you so much for your time have a nice day